Hello and welcome back to the third video in our Shop Cook Eat series. In Cook Part 2, we'll continue to cover the basics you need to know to be a pro in the kitchen. In today's video, we'll talk about how to get you out of your recipe rut, how to make the most of your leftovers, how to work smarter and not harder in the kitchen, and how to stretch your ingredients. Let's start by getting you out of that recipe rut. I'm sure I'm not the only person who finds themselves cooking the same things again and again. If you need to get out of your recipe rut too, there are several ways to get you inspired. Check your local newspaper. Sometimes they share different recipes and it may give you new ideas to use in season fruits and vegetables. You can also reach out to your family and friends, see what they've been making lately or if they've tried anything new and you can share your new favorites with them too. And of course, cookbooks and the internet are a great resource too. See if someone in your family can pass down a cookbook of their favorite recipes. And there are hundreds of social media pages and websites dedicated to sharing recipes, so you'll never run out of new things to try. I want to share with you two websites that have tons of easy and inexpensive recipes. The first one is Cooking Matters, found at cookingmatters.org. Cooking Matters actually has more than just recipes. There are also tips, videos, and more to help you eat well on a budget. Next time you have a few free minutes, browse their website and see what they have to offer. But today, I want to show you their recipes. As you can see, there are tons of options for you to choose from. And most of the recipes use common ingredients that you may already have on hand. They also have a filter for you to browse through certain types of recipes. For example, if you're looking for something kid friendly or something that can be made in 30 minutes, just select what you're looking for and hit apply. The next website is Spin Smart Eat Smart from Iowa State Cooperative Extension. This is another great resource that goes beyond just recipes. You can create a food budget if you don't already have one or use their meal planning guide to help your weekly meal plan. When you go to their recipe tab, you'll see that they also have tons of recipes already categorized so you can easily find what you're looking for. There are so many options, I'm sure you'll find something the whole family will love. And if you want to see how the recipe is made before you make it, they've got you covered. Just go to the video tab and select Easy Recipes. And speaking of easy recipes, they're exactly what you need for those busy weeknights because the last thing you need after a busy day is a long evening in the kitchen. For nights when you just don't have the time, look for slow cooker recipes or one dish recipes that can be made in one skillet or one pan. Also look for recipes that have short prep times and few steps so that your dinner can be on the table quick. Now that we've been inspired and found a new recipe, let's talk about what to do with those leftovers. Don't let your leftovers sit in the back of the fridge until it's time to toss them out. Watch this short video to learn how to get the most out of your leftovers. I like to freeze leftovers instead of letting extra food go to waste. I can include them in soup, casseroles, and sandwiches for another meal. This is an easy process, but you need to use the right methods and materials to keep food looking and tasting good. Almost any food can be safely frozen, with some exceptions, like fresh greens. And freezing leftovers is especially useful if you want to double recipes and save half for another meal. This is a great way to always have family favorites available. The reason I want to freeze leftovers properly is to prevent freezer burn and drying out. This will also help preserve the flavor, texture, and color of the food. Some common wrapping methods you can use are 
plastic freezer bags, foil, or freezer paper. You can package leftovers however you'd like to use them, such as a single serving for a lunch or enough for a family meal. For individual servings of meat, layer freezer paper between portions for easier thawing. Plastic freezer bags can be used, but you want to make sure to remove as much air as possible for the best quality. Be sure you use bags labeled for freezing. These are heavier than food storage bags. If you have something like a soup or casserole you would like to save, then some plastic or glass containers or freezer bags work well. No matter which method you use, make sure you label and date all your leftovers and use them within three or four months. There are a few food safety tips to keep in mind as you freeze leftovers. Wrap and store your leftovers quickly so that they do not sit out at room temperature too long. Choose one spot in your freezer for all leftovers. This could even be a plastic container or basket. And thaw leftovers in the fridge, cool water, or microwave. Whether you want to make extra of a recipe, save a little bit of a delicious meal, or have a ready-to-go meal, freezing leftovers is a great way to have food on hand. Hopefully you found that video helpful. Now let's talk about how you can work smarter and not harder in the kitchen. One major time saver is to use the cook once, eat twice method. To do this, all you have to do is double a recipe and save the second batch for another day. For example, if you're making spaghetti for dinner, make twice as much as your family would typically eat and then freeze the extra. You'll thank yourself later when all you have to do for dinner is thaw it out and reheat it. Another way to use the cook once, eat twice method is to prepare certain ingredients in advance so that they're ready to go when it's time to cook. For example, let's say I was making a casserole that used chicken one night and I needed chicken for another recipe later in the week. I could go ahead and cook all the chicken that I'll need and then store what I don't need at the moment in the fridge or freezer for later. If you're not doing this already, give it a try. It's a great way to save time and money. And lastly, for today's video, let's see how far we can stretch your ingredients. Oftentimes, we buy ingredients for recipes, but we don't consider how those ingredients can be used in different ways. For example, let's say you purchased rice to be a side dish for one of your meals. Think about how that rice can be used in other ways, for example, like in a soup or in a casserole. Or, if you bought noodles for a pasta dish, with the few veggies and dressing you may already have on hand, you can whip up a delicious pasta salad. Check out this handout from Cooking Matters that'll give you some more ideas on how you can use common ingredients in different ways. This will again save you money and trips to the grocery store. I hope that you found this video helpful. For more tips like this, follow us on Facebook at Tennessee State University Snap Ed. And if you'd like to learn more about how you can shop, cook, and eat within your budget, contact the program assistant or agent in your county. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you next time. Stay safe.